Welcome to the Sock Puppet account! Now I'm not crazy about the title because it's sticky and plays on my ethnicity, but apparently some people think it's a clever play on words, so there it is. I'm an icon in Canada, but for those of you in the US who are new to me, no, I'm not like the dog puppet, he's like me. I was first. In fact, there's nothing he's done that I didn't do first. But I've evolved into an award-winning commentator on the world, and he still just poops on things. I poop on things too, but metaphorically. So we share the same ethnicity, but not the same shtick. There's room for two puppets in entertainment. God knows there are hundreds of them already in TV news. And now, let's move on and look at the world. If you thought the subject of skin color was verboten after the election of President Obama, you'd be wrong, as people continue to speculate on the striking complexion of Majority Leader John Boehner, which some has described as orangey, but which paint manufacturer Benjamin Moore lists as tangerine zing. Boehner denies using tanning beds or spray tan and says his tawny color comes from being outdoors mowing his lawn and his family background. He says his mother has naturally dark skin and his father is from a long line of Cuberts. More than two million Toyota, Honda and Chrysler vehicles are being recalled by the manufacturers because of a faulty airbag. At next year's Democratic primaries, the same is expected to happen to Vice President Joe Biden. Secretary of State John Kerry was fined $50 for not clearing the walk of his Boston home after a recent snowstorm. That's ironic, since as Obama's top foreign policy diplomat, Kerry is accustomed to shoveling. With Mitt Romney out of the race, You're five out. potential GOP candidates are lining up to lure Romney supporters into their campaigns. Jeb Bush, Rick Perry, Bobby Jindal, and Marco Rubio all are trying to entice the backers. But so far, the most potent draw for big buck donors has been Ted Cruz, who promised to exempt from deportation their undocumented domestics. And now, here's some balls in your face. Despite the negative press it's given the game, the recent deflate gate controversy has shown how to get NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to take domestic violence by his players seriously. Have them marry a game ball. <laughs> the hockey season is in full swing, much like Milan Lucic's stick. We know what's happening on the ice, but let's go to social media to see what players are doing between the puck drops. From the official Twitter account of the Columbus Blue Jackets, such Bob very save, much glove. Hey Columbus, when it comes to tweeting, drop the gloves. Here we find Carolina Hurricanes' Anton Kudabin at the dentist, highlighting the difference between today's young players and the pros of the past. Teeth. Here's Nick Letty showing his ex-Chicago teammates Brandon Volog and Brandon Saad how much his diet has changed since joining the Islanders. Model Ashley Graham has made history as the first plus-size model in Sports Illustrated's annual swimsuit issue. The magazine found that the shoot with Ashley was quicker and more efficient, as a model's lunch break is quicker without time added to vomit. Airhead heiress Paris Hilton has reportedly bought herself a new pair of breasts, and judging by the volume, she got them at Costco. Also, that was 10 seconds of your life you'll never get back. DC Comics has given Superman a brand new super ability, which has always been the problem with the character. Just not powerful enough. <laughs> Soup's new power is called Super Flare, which turns him into a sort of human firebomb. The new power makes him appear to be flaming, but many thought his old costume did the same thing. Not me. I love Superman. Batman's way too emo. And now, let's look at some upcoming films. The new film Ex Machina, which will no doubt be referred to as Ex Machina to satisfy the lowest common denominator. It's about the world's first artificial intelligence robot, but as you may have noticed so far, no robot. Just some blonde guy talking to another guy auditioning for a no-fly list. It takes 45 seconds till we see the damned robot. Bad sign for a movie about a robot. And after we see the robot, more dudes talking. The only action comes at the end when the robot runs for about two seconds. Can you tell this film is from the UK? Only the British can make a robot movie boring. Compare that to the trailer for the rebooted Terminator movie, Terminator Genesis. And you know they're shaking things up when the title swaps out vowels. But look, action, fighting, 10 seconds in, robots with guns. See, this is how you distract from the signs that the movie will be crap. The trailer leaves a few questions unanswered, like is it necessary to air out your tackle when you time travel or is it a preference? And how does a robot get gray hair? 
I'll be back. What? Interesting. I'm the only one who knows where that nuke is. Well, then, in that case, I'd say you'd better stop. <laughs> film that should help Melissa McCarthy in her goal of topping Johnny Depp in consecutive pieces of crap. The movie, cleverly titled Spy, has her as an analyst, emphasis on anal, at a spy agency who goes into the field when the top agents are compromised. If you recognize the plot, that's because it's the same as the Get Smart movie from a few years ago. But plot doesn't matter because the humor here is, she's a secret agent and she's fat. Jason Statham is in it, looking like he dosed his privates with poison ivy. There are a couple of funny lines in the trailer, and McCarthy can make the most out of them. It's a confidence builder. But I think her comic talents will be better used in a movie that focused on her wit, not her waistline. The film will be released in May, but I think it's heading straight to Netflix as we speak. And it won't be out until late 2016, but it's never too early to get a sneak peek at the sequel to that Nazis on the Moon movie, Iron Sky. Iron Sky 2, which features reptilian Nazis riding dinosaurs in the hollow earth. Godwin's Law be damned, I think that might be Lizard Hitler. But keep an eye online for more teaser trailers at any time. You ever wondered why Captain Jack Sparrow walked so funny? Items have been found from the wreckage of famous pirate Blackbeard's ship, which include a urethral syringe for curing syphilis, huh? and two pump clysters, devices used for sending fluid into one's rectum. I'm surprised that pirates use pumps to send fluid into their rectums. I always figured that was done by other pirates. of waiting for Guffman, a teacher in a Dallas high school got his students to shoot a video for the song Uptown Funk. Well, it's more like he got them to move a little while he uses the kids to put himself in the spotlight. Was no student capable of being the focus? Well, at least it's good to see that the Texas school boards have reversed their staff don't ask, don't tell policy. Don't believe me, just watch. Here's a photo that went viral. Supposedly, a man arrived home from a business trip and took this picture of his wife. When the man later looked at the picture, he divorced his wife over what he saw. Can you see it? Here, we'll zoom in. Zoom in again. There they are. Supposedly, these eyes belong to a man she had been having sex with who quickly hid under the bed when her husband got home early. I call bull. Look at this man's supposed wife. What is she, 17? She looks old enough to be a wife only in some cult or breakaway Mormon community. And how does the husband know she knew the dude was there? Has he never seen an episode of Criminal Minds? Also, who has a captain's bed as man and wife? Usually a guy buys a new bed with his wife, rather than taking with him the one he's had since he was nine. And I'm not convinced that's even a guy's face. It's a pretty cramped space for an adult male. This could just be a trick of the light or a simulacrum, like Virgin Mary on a piece of toast, a spooky looking tree, a face in the sink, or an unusually shaped potato. Sorry, but I've seen photos of Nessie that have more convincing stories. The evidence here all points to a hoax. Speaking of monsters, this is new footage taken of what is allegedly Florida's version of Bigfoot, the skunk ape. The anonymous person who posted the video said he was canoeing in the swamps of Lettuce Lake Park when he saw this creature looking like it was foraging for food in the water. Now, I believe in Bigfoot, so I was initially excited about the footage, but upon repeated viewings, I'm pretty sure that's just Nick Nolte. That's the Sock Puppet account for week one. It's still taking shape, so don't go trolling crap on the internet. I'm Ed the Sock, and I'm nobody's puppet. Don't you be either. Hey, Joes, if you feel like being sociable, follow me on Twitter, at Ed the Sock, or check out my Facebook page, The Real Ed the Sock. But don't start saying stupid crap. There's enough of that out there already. And now, as Jack Lord said at the end of every sneak peek of every episode of the classic Hawaii Five-O, aloha.